Hello, um, we are live again for another Unshush Talk. This week, we're going to be joined by Maureen Pollack, who is the founder of an amazing, super fun um, pleasure product called The Water Slide. And we're just going to get her on now. Hello. Hello. Hi, Maureen. Hello. How are you it's doing? It's so nice to meet you. It's so nice to meet you too. Thanks for having me on. Oh, no, thank you so much for connecting. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, gosh, we were speaking. So I came across uh, the water slide, obviously, earlier this year. Um, mm-hmm. We did a little partnership for Masturbation May. So, yeah, it's really nice to actually put a name to the face. <laughs> yes, I love it. It's, yeah. it's a beautiful face, so great. Oh, thank you. Uh, likewise. <laughs> um, Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we could start by um, just talking about this amazing product that you created. So sure. what is the water slide? Yeah, I guess you're right. Let's start with what it is because <laughs> it's... I, I literally could go to trade shows and put them on the table and say, guess what this is? Actually, let's, let's do that real quick. Hopefully, guys in the comments, don't say it if you know what it is. But if you were to look at this, what is this for? Yeah. I, I literally, in the beginning six years ago, would say, if you can guess what this is, I will give you 10 for free. And it's like, you have two guesses, go. Yeah. I'll give away one for free if somebody could guess it. <laughs> Without knowing, no cheating. But this is called the water slide. And it's an aid for the bathtub technique. So if you don't know what the bathtub technique, it's when us ladies like to scoot underneath the bathtub faucet and let the water wash over our vulva and clitoris. And it's just this orgasmic sensual experience. But for a lot of us, um, if I straighten my hair, I wouldn't want to get my hair wet or doing the bathtub yoga, whatever. I had a beautiful accident when I was 15 and the faucet popped off and the water came spraying out and landed midline in the bathtub, which I had this eureka, like, this is the most amazing thing. But I, I, I always thought about that experience, how I wanted the water to come to me and sit comfortably in the tub. And at 30, when I was an intimacy coach and speaking with my OBGYN, I told her about the bathtub technique and how the water should come to you. And she goes, make it, invent it. I, I would invest in that. So I did, and I invented the water slide, which you tie to your bathtub water spout with the self-gripping ribbon, and it diverts the water to land midline of the bathtub. That's what the water slide is. It's just a cool concept. Um, Thanks. For me, I mean, I feel almost a bit like silly that I never even, before I obviously came across the water slide and looked into it a bit more, I'd never even heard of the, the, the bathtub force it like I was like what is this I can't believe I haven't even tried it yeah wow that's so fun yeah lots of fun and a lot of things have sparked from it that I guess I just had a dirty mind a little bit I was like oh this feels good but I had super clean mind a super clean (laughs) and dirty sexy imagination super clean um so I really wanted to create it in a modest way and make it accessible and inclusive for as many people as possible So one of my big things was just if you look at the packaging, it's like really benign and non-pornographic. And at the time, most of the sex toys that were on the market were, it's fine, I have no judgment, but they were covered with porn stars and it was kind of taboo or the materials were made from toxic chemicals. And I was like, I want something that anybody could have and very inexpensive just to help open up the doors to pleasure and sensuality and feminine hygiene. Mm -hmm. So I I didn't realize what would spark from it is women with disabilities, people who have no hands. It's truly hands free. It helped them get clean and also feel good. Um, I could go on for hours, but. Oh, please do. (laughs) Oh, it's great. And I think, Yeah. yeah, like you said, with the packaging and everything, because you are obviously a woman and you've created it for women. And it's like, yeah, you can tell it's, like there's a female behind it so how have you seen so obviously since she launched the project how have you seen um like the industry changing because like you said with how things were marketed back then to how they are now um yeah what changes have you seen oh um i'm pleasantly happily uh surprised and to see that 
there's a lot of women who've entered the space when yeah. I did and a little bit after. And a lot of us see things in a similar way. We're like, let's make something that we want. And it's no longer males making something for women, which is fine. I'm not yeah. bashing men. I love my men. <laughs> um, but there's something about knowing what we want and yeah. how we want it. And a lot of women in the market have made things that are body safe. And we, we collaborate. There's a, it's a small circle. I feel like I see, yeah. I'm sure you do too. I see the same name, same faces at the same conventions. And it's really beautiful because we're not pinned up against each other. It mm -hmm. is the most beautiful space of women who literally you would think would be competitors, but we just support one another and lift each other up. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> that way and I do yeah like even when I reached out to you I was like oh my gosh you came back to me <laughs> it was so lovely and then speaking with you on the phone I was just like oh she's just super super oh. um, yeah really positive and like you said wanting to collaborate and I think women wanting yeah. to work together as well is is super nice especially within this space um so yeah that's great um, oh, and and to answer your question um other things that have come to the market since women have entered it since I started is really unique products. So not everything has to go inside of you. Yeah. And I think that's a different angle that women have been taking. So we're seeing a lot of like the suction cup vibrators coming yeah. out, yeah. jewelry, like again, tasteful, fun, body safe products, but really it's, it's groundbreaking. Forever, it was always dildos. 10,000 years ago, it was a yeah. rock that went inside of you. And not all of us find pleasure through the inside. Yeah, that's it. And it's, it's making things based on your own experiences as well. So it seems like a really like, there's a lot of innovation within the space now, which is really positive. And yeah, mm -hmm. nice to see. Um, and I think the conversation on like female pleasure seems to be opening up a lot more led by women or females. So, yes, uh, I feel like it's becoming less, or I don't know if it's just because I'm being more involved within the space. I'm like, it's normal now. Like everybody's talking about it, but yeah. No, you, it is. Do you feel like there has been um, like a shift in that conversation and people are now like talking more openly about it? Absolutely. Um, I, I'm in a modern Orthodox Jewish community and I, I was very fearful when I started and I created the product that I was going to be cast aside and I was really concerned, but I've been pleasantly surprised. I get some of the most religious women coming up to me and saying, I'm so impressed by what you're doing. Can I buy another one for my sister? And there's a safe place. So a, a lot of people either talk about it, but we still have a little bit to come. So for example, yep. on Facebook and Instagram, I, I get blocked all the time from just doing ads. Um, so erectile so dysfunction is okay, Yeah, but female pleasure, no. <laughs> Some of these things, I mean, it's like we feel like we're progressing and then you get all the like blocks on Instagram and, you know, the whole like free the nipple movement. It's kind of, yeah, there's still yeah. in some people's viewpoints, but yeah, it's yeah. Like, nice to meet other women who are like trying mm -hmm. to leave the space and liberate other women. Yes. Um, <laughs> so yeah, like uh, what would you say... Um, so for women who maybe don't prioritize um, their pleasure as much, like what would be your advice for finding time for pleasure? Or well, great, I, yeah, I, I would, it? yeah, that's a, that's a good question. It's a very important one. When I meet with people, I sometimes ask them like, what do you think is blocking you? Is it trauma? Are you very stressed out because there's hierarchy of needs? And if you're trying to survive and you need water and shelter, uh, sexuality and libido is kind of in the secondary and it's not on the front of your mind. So I'd actually say, that's okay. Like take care of these things. It will come back. And then there's also more of the everyday issues where it's, um, are you too busy because you have your kids or you're working and there's dishes. And I say, okay, what's more important, <laughs> your dishes or your libido and your intimacy with yourself or with your partner? So I would say three days out of the week, screw the dishes. Actually, don't screw the dishes. <laughs> screw yourself or your partner and, and make that the priority. And then you yeah. could say, when I'm finished, then I can do the dishes as opposed to when I'm done with the dishes or my laundry list of everything, then I could, but you're too tired by then. So I'd rather be too tired with the dishes and let those sit for the morning. Yeah. That's one little thing I that like, I would say. So I'm like, I don't have a dishwasher at the moment. So I'm like, yes, maybe I should leave the dishes more often. Prioritize my pleasure. <laughs> you will be happier when you do the dishes yeah. afterwards. I promise you. You're like, this is so nice. I love cleaning the dishes. <laughs> so what would be, um, obviously, 
there are benefits to finding time for that pleasure like what would you say are some of those benefits that you can feel like mentally physically emotionally all yeah <laughs> well there's a lot there too um self-care is very important as yeah. a whole so let's start there whether it's just taking time to take a bath or a walk or just five minutes to meditate self-care is very important for rejuvenating yourself yeah. masturbation has a lot of amazing benefits as well um, starting with strengthening your pelvic floor for multiple re like forget the kegels for a minute like this is a fun way to strengthen your pelvic floor um if you're looking for dopamine releasing if you're stressed mm -hmm. it can help you be happier it uh, it really intimacy it really connects you with your partner it's very important to be together and i'm not talking about if there's stuff going on and forcing it that's a separate subject but if you're yeah. in a good place and you you want to be together you connect better and it'll make you feel better all, all over. And then you could get into, it helps you burn calories. It's sex or size. Mm -hmm. it, I can't actually think about anything wrong with it because yeah. it, it's phenomenal. And putting it as a priority on your list is self-care and self-love. Definitely. Totally agree with that. Like to find it is self-love. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Um, so intimacy. So you're also an intimacy coach. Gosh, such, such a busy lady. <laughs> I have to stop. I have to stop sometimes. I love yeah, it. It's fun. Um, so how, um, okay. So also I, um, I read somewhere that you've been, how long have you been married for? I just had my 15 year anniversary. Congratulations. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Um, it's insane. It's so insane. I, I'm, I, I got married when I was 23, so you do the math. But at the time, I felt so ready, so sure. And looking back, I'm like, I was 23, and I see 23-year-olds. But I guess when you know, you know. Yeah. And I'm so happy I signed on that dotted line. And it really honestly keeps getting better. So Yeah, and I guess, like, okay, having a long-term marriage that I hope to have one day. <laughs> <laughs> Single at the moment. But, um, yeah, how would you say you keep intimacy alive then? Mm. Um, in a long-term relationship yeah and we have two children uh 12 and 9 oh. there's times where uh, we have to get creative and fun especially the older they get the more they know yeah um which is kind of fun but i i practice a, a jewish marital laws which is called nita mm -hmm. and it's actually designed to help keep the intimacy alive and it's the most difficult thing that i practice and i mess up all the time but um, essentially what it is, is when a woman menstruates, you stop touching your partners. Mm. Okay. Partner. I, that was not a Freudian slip. It was one partner. <laughs> I, I, okay. Forget I said that. Stop touching your partner. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> um, so it's going to sound like it's to keep people apart, but when I'm done, I just want you to kind of think about how it brings people together. Yeah. So when I, when I menstruate, the second I see blood, we stop touching mm -hmm. and it's for the whole entire menstruation. And then I start to count seven days after I'm done menstruating. So that's essentially 12 days out of the month where I try really hard for us not to touch. Mm -hmm. I have an incredibly high libido borderline problem. Mm -hmm. So that is very difficult for me. But what it does is it creates a honeymoon every single month when you can't have something. And I hear a lot of people when they say, I could have it whenever I want it. It's just, I just want something new. I miss that fire. I want something like the borderline adultery. They're like, I'm being tempted. I just want that first kiss or that. So what happens when I can't touch my husband and he just walks by, I have that. I want what I can't have. Yeah. And I'm so aware of his body and his space where there was a few months where I kind of said, I'm done doing this. And really quickly, I, I fell into that. Like, yeah, maybe later. I was like, wait, what is mm -hmm. that? Like, why? So when the, the, the Nita, when it's over, I submerge into a mikvah, which is water, and I bathe, and then you're supposed to go home and come together. Mm -hmm. It is the most, not all the time, but can you imagine when you're fasting and you're not allowed to eat it if it's just 24 hours, that bite of food, the first bite you take, how delicious it is, that happens. Okay. Every month it is, yeah. I'm starving. I'm so hungry. And sometimes when I mess up and I should probably shouldn't admit this live on air, but when we mess up, it feels like I'm having an affair with my <laughs> husband. <laughs> it's so, also, it's insane. Isn't it? So yeah. Wow. I love that. Yeah. Such refreshing. Like 
idea because I guess you know you could go 12 days without even practicing practicing it to say that we're going to do it but then you could anyway go 12 days without sex um, in a relationship so having that conscious like okay we're doing it for 12 days and then reconnecting after yeah wow that's so special like I, I I would say to people try to do it for five days I I just anybody who's watching I urge you to try five days of just self-discipline and try it. See what happens. You screw up. Awesome. <laughs> if yeah. you don't, because I've had, I, I have had women who I've been counseling and they've told me like, I don't love my husband. He's my friend, but I don't, I'm not attracted. I'm like, it's okay. Like, good. Let it out. I'm not a therapist, but let it out. And I, I suggested the five days and she called me on day three and she's like, I'm so sorry. I promise you I'd do it. She's like, I was sleeping and I was having a dream about him and I woke up and I attacked him. And I was like, isn't that what you wanted? You wanted to feel lustful towards your husband. And so, yeah, try it for five days. See what happens. (laughs) Oh, but, but they have to be in on it. You have to let them know. Oh yeah. (laughs) The the communication, I guess, is super important with that one. Yeah. I imagine did it they're like what's going on <laughs> yes you you'd be surprised by the fun little games that I've heard have come from it the like the flirting comes back the like I I put on makeup not that you need makeup to be pretty or anything but they're like I just felt this like dating vibe and I was just and teasing adds that like dating element back into it like it keeps it exciting yeah it's obviously working as well 15 years gosh Oh, it's crazy. Uh, it's, I'm so gifted and blessed. I'm like really grateful um, that my 23 year old self was smart. Oh, she definitely yeah. was. Um, yes. Good job, girl. And then, so for people who aren't in relationships, um, want that intimacy or want to meet someone, but they almost have like a fear of intimacy. Like, do you get cl- clients like that who come to you? And what would your advice be? Um, well, I would, I would ask them, what, what are you afraid of? And we would, I would do the like dive, dive, dive in, like say the worst thing that can happen in any scenario. It doesn't have to be for dating. Like I'm afraid. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid to get hurt. I'm afraid of screwing up. I'm afraid. And sometimes it comes with, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm afraid. And there's some deeper things sometimes that come because sexuality is really connected to your psyche. And I I do refer people over to sexual therapists or therapists in general all the time. Um, But for some reason, some people can't go see a therapist for whatever reason. They don't want to. They can't. Mm -hmm. So I'm there to open up a listening ear. So I'd ask them, like, what are you you afraid of? Are you afraid? Is it circumstantial? Is there, are you not connecting with somebody? Um, There's not people around you. Are you not getting out? Especially during Corona, it's very difficult for people to meet people. So what, what are you taking an active role? So what are you doing and what's blocking you is where I would start. Yeah, that's a good starting point. Start, starting at the beginning, like where, where, where are you not getting the intimacy or like, yeah, what's blocking you basically? Yeah. Uh, it's so complex though, isn't it? Intimacy. And is it like different types of intimacy? Because when I was looking at intimacy, I was like, what is intimacy? <laughs> oh, Yes. Yes. What, what, what does intimacy mean to you? When you said like, oh, I want it, I want to get married. Is it the connection? Like, what are you craving? Not to get personal. You don't have to. Yeah. Oh, is that a question for me? Yeah. Like, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think is intimacy? I feel like intimacy for me is an emotional connection. Um, <laughs> definitely. So that's why sometimes I feel like yes. the past I might have feared intimacy because it's getting too close to someone. It's scary. Isn't it scary? It's scary. <laughs> when... you know, it's, the best things are on the other side of fear, they say. So. <laughs> it's worth it. Even if, you know, it, it disappears, like it's better to have it. That, that old saying, it's better to love and loss and never to have loved. It, it feels it's, good. But Somebody said something like this to me recently. It was like, um, it's almost like you're too, you're overprotecting yourself. So then it's like almost that, Oh, I can't remember that exact phrase, but it was yeah. along those lines, basically, of like, if you're not even, if you're too afraid to love, then that blockage is going to just, that's going to be painful in its own way anyway. Yeah, I, I would also change the narrative to like, oh, I'm looking for intimacy and I'm scared. When you meet the right person, 
not only will it feel natural, it will feel better. And a good partner is somebody that makes you into a better person and makes you feel safe. And you do the same for them. So yeah. when you actually do meet this person, it, you're not going to be afraid. Like you're just going to be a, like addicted and obsessed. And it's this chemical reaction yeah. that you can't stop it. So it, it's actually really hard to try to stop it and say, I'm scared. I don't want to do this mm -hmm. unless you're actively trying. So sometimes yeah. it's, it's meeting the right person. If that person hasn't crossed your path, it's okay. They're there. Yeah feeling comfortable, I guess, then with the person enough to let your guards down and, you know, mm -hmm. intimate, feel intimate. Yeah, it, it happens sometimes very fast. And sometimes it's it's right under your nose. And it's really gradual with a best friend. Yeah, um, so that's what I mean. Intimacy doesn't need to just be like on a sexual in the sexual context. Intimacy is like intimate relationships. So, you know, friendships um, as well. Yeah, it's it's all there's different spokes and they're all important. The the attraction is definitely part of it. The companionship is part of it. The trust, the building, it it's all there. It's all part of it. Yeah, and yeah. when you're working with, obviously, like you're saying, it's so broad. But is there ever anything within the space of intimacy, which is so vast, we've just spoken about? But do you get um, women coming to you with like a particular? general intimacy concern or not I, I do I mean one there's a, a couple common things that I get yeah. so there's there's women who are single and I I do get this it's kind of interesting how often it happens mm -hmm. that they have issues around sexuality so they for one reason or another um they were let's say they masturbated when they're younger and their parents caught them and they hit them and now whenever there's any pleasure, they associate it with a negative thing. And that creates a barrier for them to become intimate with, with other people. Yeah. And then I speak mainly with women who are married for a long time and have kids. And they're like, I don't feel like I want to be with my partner and I've lost my libido. And that is where I get a lot of women who are like, I don't want to go see a therapist. I, I just want to address this. I want somebody to talk to. So then we try to work on some exercises, just like if you want to get strong and your back muscles or your core, you're going to go do yoga. We do some exercises with their pelvic area and sexuality. And some of the common thing that I see a lot is women who are anti on antidepressants. Mm -hmm. So they like my doctor didn't really tell me. I was like, well, the first question I ask is I'm like, are you on any antidepressants? Nine times out of 10, it's a yes. And it's usually when they say, I can get turned on, but I can't orgasm or I just can't get there. And I just don't want it. I'm like question, are you on antidepressants? And they're like, yes. I'm like, well, talk to your doctor, see which one's more important, but then don't put so much pressure on yourself. It's not you. This is a very common symptom. And it's so great as well to have these conversations that to let people know that they are common, common, you know, common things that are happening for women as well. So yeah. Like you're not alone out there. No, you're and there's a lot of pressure. I mean, one of the beautiful things is that we talk about women and pleasure and men now are starting to come together and like, okay, I'm going to focus on giving you an orgasm. And then there's a lot of pressure for women to have orgasms and it takes yeah. a long time and it's difficult. What, next, actually, just from what you said, like what would you say, um, you know, chasing the O, sometimes women, we just get to yeah. obsessed with it in the moment and then you lose it yeah. all together. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's the enjoying, it's changing the mindset because we're getting from all over the place like, oh, can you squirt? Oh, how many orgasms can you have? Can you have an orgasm? Go. So we have this pressure. But when we understand more about what goes involved with women's pleasure and an actual orgasm, it takes on average 20 minutes for a woman to reach full arousal. That's like not even to climax. That's for full arousal. Well, hello. I'm getting messages. Fun. Um so it's allowing yourself to be in the moment. This is, let's not rush through it. Let's set our intentions and whether it's by yourself or with other people, practice letting go and indulging in the moment. So it's relieving that stress and pressure. Mm -hmm. And the pleasure element is what we should be seeking. It shouldn't be the orgasm seeking. It's the pleasure seeking. If something hurts, don't do it. If something feels good, do it more. And before you know it, a lot of women can relax enough and spend the time, maybe 40 minutes. It's okay if it takes you 40 minutes to orgasm. It's okay if you can have 10 orgasms in one session. There's, it's not a competition. And it's, it's just pleasure. 
not one size fits all. It's all pleasure is personal. So it's a personal experience, isn't it? So yeah, we did have a comment here. So what about um, what about men? Um, do you work with men as well and um, around their intimacy? Issues? Yeah, is there a common um, issue that comes up for males or there is a common issue. And I in my practice, since I don't have an office, I primarily work with women. But if a woman wants to come with her man, I will speak to both of them. And that's a, a privacy and a safety thing. I've, I've, I won't get into all that, but usually I do meet with women or couples. One of the number one things that I'm addressed with um, for the people who come to me is porn addiction. Uh. That it is an, an epidemic. I will go as far as saying that. Um, and I'm porn positive. Sex work is work. I support porn stars. I've been to the Expos Awards, nominated for awards. I've I love my porn star ladies and oh, there we go. Oh, um, go back. <laughs> sorry, I'm I'm getting calls in. I didn't know how to block them. Um, so I also get with the porn. Sorry, sorry, it keeps happening. <laughs> with um with masturbation for males, and this is kind of controversial, but. Uh, I'm going to say what actually I'm doing a study on it with the Intimacy Research Project about masturbation. My hypothesis is that when women masturbate, it increases your libido, blood flow, it helps your pelvic floria. If a couple, and I'm going to preface this, if a couple wants to be more intimate and have that strength and libido together and desire, I would urge men to cut back on your masturbation. So women increase your masturbation men decrease because when a woman masturbates, she can still get aroused and have sex that same minute or hour with most yeah. males. When they masturbate within a 24 hour period, they're satisfied. It's like a flame that's been satiated. It's, it's there. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of other things that we could go into about pornography and the effects that it has on the body and psyche, but just the masturbation act. And again, I'm not saying men should not masturbate, Pleasure is great and masturbate together, do all that stuff. But if we're talking about intimacy and coming together, the masturbation for the men can put out that fire. Women also want to be attacked and grabbed and thrown up against the wall sometimes, like if, if they like that. So I don't know if that answered your question about male um, intimacy increasing it or if there's a specific question. Yeah, I think, no, I mean, yeah, it's great to... Obviously, we're speaking about female pleasure, but it is good if you're in obviously in a relationship and with a male, and yeah, just seeing how you can work as a as a partnership, you know, to find pleasure together. <laughs> yeah, and, and like you said before, communication is key. So again, with pornography, if both the people together love to watch it together and do it together, that's fine. Like, do your thing. But sometimes, from the people who come to me. Um, they're not like there's one part like they're doing it in private or there mm. there's a betrayal element for some of the women or men because I actually have spoken to it where the the women can't have intercourse without having pornography in the background and it's it's hurting the male so if both people are happy something's fine but if one person's pleasure should not override somebody's pain is kind of my mantra yeah it's a good mantra I'll say it again one person's pleasure should not override somebody's pain. And it could go for physical, oh. emotional. Uh, I want to be poly. I want to be monogamous, but that hurts me to see you with somebody. But why are you taking my pleasure from me? Mm -hmm. It hurts me. So, but that gives me pleasure. And that's an extreme example. And again, it, with all of these um, topics and issues, it's always going back to communication, I guess, isn't it? So having that clear communication with your partner, um, and facing the fear of like intimacy or yeah like yeah there, there, you have to also put in some work sometimes and compromise mm -hmm. and it's okay there's nothing wrong with it if somebody is coming to you and they're they're saying hey i i think our libido's mismatched or i want to be with you more let's look at our situation and see like what is bought like have that talk go for a walk like yeah going for walks is a great way to get stuff out because it's not yeah. like in your face like we're gonna have a talk and it's not a fight it's hey we should both want to make each other as happy as they like it's my job to make you happy and it's your job to make my me happy 
And ultimately, it's our own job to make ourselves happy. Mm. And I think, yeah, taking it away. So having more open conversations about, um, about sex lives outside of the bedroom, you know, bringing it into that normal context, having that fresh air going for a walk and just talking about it from a point where it's ple- we're talking about, you know, joint pleasure or personal pleasure. So, yeah. yeah. And flirting is a big one. People love it. Like, like maybe tell your partner, or ask your partner, what is one thing I can do in a day that makes you happy? And it might not be the same thing that you think that they would say. Mm-hmm. It might be as simple as hold my hand, slap my butt when you walk by it. Like, yeah, that's, that's like a common <laughs> one that comes up with like the most conservative people I meet with. It's always the, like buttoned up ones are like, I want you to grab my throat sometimes and choke me. I'm like, Yes, <laughs> bring, bring simple, simple desires out there, isn't it? And, yes, know, don't feel like you have to restrain them. Yeah, and and learn together. Sometimes people have desires in the kink world, and mm-hmm. they're ashamed or embarrassed. But learning them in a safe way together is a it's a bonding experience, and it's okay. It's okay to have desires and talk about them. Yeah, definitely without judgment. <laughs> Without judgment, yes, that's it. And just allowing people to reveal what, what, what would make them happy, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I would also preface when you have those conversations, you can have just like everybody heard from Fifty Shades of Grey, is having like a safe word for the conversation. Because sometimes yeah. somebody's desires are outside of the comfort level of their partner and it can cause them pain, whatever it might be. So it's okay to say, Let's have the conversation. But if I'm starting to feel uncomfortable, pineapple juice. Like, yeah. like no judgment. We'll talk about it later. But right now, I'm starting to feel uncomfortable. I, I would like to stop right now. Just yeah. pineapple juice. That's a good one. Pineapple juice. I love pineapple juice. <laughs> <laughs> pineapple juice. Pineapple juice. Um, but I guess that's almost like setting boundaries as well within the conversation. So, you know, yeah. knowing what feels comfortable and what doesn't that's feel. It. Yeah. Yeah. Feeling safe, having a creating a safe space between you. So I feel, yeah, maybe safety as well within feeling how how if um if you're not in a relationship, um mm. how would you go about having those conversations then? I guess it would, you'd still need to feel safe enough to have them. It, are you asking like if you're on a date with somebody, how do you bring up conversations of maybe what you're into? Yes. Let's yeah. <laughs> so let's say um you're on a date with somebody and you actually do want to see if you're compatible in the bedroom what if if they're not comfortable having the conversation do you think they'll be comfortable if you're ready to have sex with this person and you can't have a conversation about sex how could you be physical with them before you could talk to them Mm. so some sometimes with dating it goes the opposite way around like you can get physical with somebody and then you haven't actually had that conversation so It's a, it's a mixed uh, order sometimes. And I guess there is yeah. one order to it. But. It's scary. But I, I urge you to try it and see how it goes and have the conversation. And some beautiful thing that's come from Corona is people feel more comfortable talking about your lifestyle. So people have no problem saying, have you been out? Have you gone? Have you traveled? Have you? There's no difference between saying, do you have unprotected sex? Or... Are you, can we have a conversation about sexual, and you don't have to make it clinical. You can have fun. It can turn into like this sexy, like, hey, um, are, are you into, like, I saw this movie and it, it was pretty hot. I'm wondering, are you into that? Like, what are your thoughts on it? That's a way of asking people yeah. if they're into things without it being like, I would like bondage <laughs> and are you into it too? It, it's a conversation, isn't it? <laughs> Having some of those openers, like, oh, you know, <laughs> sometimes gay to these types of parties or this or yeah. Yeah. And I have had some people tell me because I'm, it's my industry and family members sometimes will be like, just so you know, it makes me uncomfortable sometimes when you talk about sexuality and I go, thanks for telling me that. Like, and I will be conscious when I'm around you to not talk about sexuality. And then I stop and yeah. it's sometimes kind of funny because then right afterwards the next week they're like, can I go through the X-Biz awards? I'm like, oh, oh hell no. <laughs> oh hell no. So obviously you've been working in the space for, for a while. Has yeah. uh, your friends and family, has their perception of what you do, has it changed? No, there's only who 
thinks what I do is pornography, which is kind of funny because I'm like, it's not pornography, but that's funny. But actually, all my family members are the ones who have pushed me to be more me. They're, they're yeah. the ones who, when I was afraid to invent the water slide, were like, what are you worried about? Like, are, are you worried about judgment? Like, you're awesome. Like, you do things in a cool way. Like, don't worry. If those people don't like you, then you don't want them in your life anyway. So my family and friends have really lifted me up to help me come out as who I am and, and wanting to be there for women and men and with intimacy in a non-judgmental way. So uh, my mom was the first person when I launched my website who purchased a water slide. I was like, mom. Hi. <laughs> so nice to have the support yeah. yeah it's huge it's huge I feel for um one of the hardest things uh, about being in this industry is what's opened my eyes especially in pornography mm -hmm. is the amount of abuse that women and sex workers receive and when I went to the expos awards um there was a moment of silence and it was all suicide was talked about the whole night and a lot of the actors and actresses would get up and say just real quick question how many of you have received the death threat the whole entire room lifted their hands. Wow. Um, how many of you have received a death threat today? The whole entire room lifted their hands. And then she goes, how many of you have received a death threat from a family member? Everybody in the room lifted their hands. And I, I was floored because I wasn't, I'm not in the porn industry, but I was there and I was like, this is horrific. There's so, everybody you ask, have you seen pornography? At some point has seen it for the most part. Yeah. And yet, they're sending death threats and hating on these people. There's such a hypocrisy. So one of my missions is, even though I'm not in that space, I want to shed light on other people who are in the space and say, I support you in what you do and it's your choice. So yeah. not to judge I'm other people. With that, we um, did an interview with um, somebody called Danica Meyer and she's a cam mm. content strategist as well, founder of um, a platform called Money Mama Club. But we were talking about, you know, sex work and, how it's perceived um, in society. And like you just said, you know, there's a, supply, there's a supply and demand, there's a demand for it. But when women actually supply, it's, it's like it's you said, on you. <laughs> it's results in death threats, which is just, you, you can't imagine that it's still happening. Cause when you're working in the space, you feel so far forward and well, yeah. you actually look around and it's like, okay, it's not so quite. <laughs> I think it's because it's also so extreme. It's very a uh, guttural reaction for some people who are against it. Mm -hmm. And that's one of my missions with lovability is I want to break stigmas and fight for female rights. And when it, when it's with sexuality, it's so in your face. So with our condoms, we make it very female friendly and beautiful and loud because we, we saw that there was a discrepancy and hypocrisy between when men purchase condoms as hey, good job, you're taking care of your sexual health. And when women do it, yeah. it's, you have this like a whore element or like a slut element. So I want to remove slut shaming and increase like the awareness of sexual health. With, uh, I'm getting all sappy here. Okay. No, I love it. And I love lovability as well. So can you tell us a bit more about um, what are the plans with lovability? So that's actually where <sighs> I found you guys probably like, two or three years ago when I was, you know, just starting Shushbox as a little like page of depression. <laughs> I was like, gosh, this brand is so fun. And it, I felt like yeah. two to three years ago, there wasn't um, that branding that I could relate to. But I feel with lovability, it does feel like it's for women. And it feels like I feel empowered. It's fun. Mm. And it doesn't make you feel ashamed of like your sexuality, basically. Yeah. talk more about lovability and what's, what's uh, <laughs> well lovability um so i had the water slide which was mojo enterprise and i purchased lovability and i've been collaborating with lovability for years and i purchased it with two partners um the woman who sold it to me wanted me to buy it because we had very similar missions and she didn't want to sell it to like a big like trojan let's say um she didn't want to so she sold it to me with two partners and I bought it and I combined the water slide with my partners and we spent the last year and a half making everything in our packaging eco-friendly, um, all of our products being FDA, body safe, mm -hmm. so we can just get it out and legally, because lubricant, for example, you have to have an FDA approval. We just wanted to be able to go out and get products into as many women's hands to help their sexual health. And 
I think I, I think I have some condoms around. So we saw with the condoms, not just the stigma, but what is on the condoms? How are they packaged? Um, I think they're here. Hold up. Yeah. So here's, here's our condoms. Hi. I just and love <laughs> the way everything looks. It's so like fun. It's fun. So we, we want it to be unapologetically female yeah. and inclusive. So however you identify, but we wanted pretty. We didn't want it to be shushed and quiet and muted, like in the corner clinical. We're like, no, just like you're going to buy a compact. Like, it's beautiful. We like things pretty. Wow, yes. But it comes, you it's a functional. I'd want to be like, oh, I'd want to just get it. <laughs> Would you like a condom? Would you like a condom? Yeah. So, so they come in, um, they come in a tin and that's to protect it. So a lot of condoms, like they're in the wallet and you don't know how long they're there. And again, with having the conversation when you're dating and it comes time for sex. I was just about to say, they, the, the tin of condoms could actually be a great like, conversation starter around. It is. Like, what do you think to this? <laughs> yes. So, and it's part of consent too, when you're taking out a condom. And again, you can remove consent at any point in time, but it helps with the conversation. Yeah. But it, there's a safety element to it. So the tin protects the condoms. Mm -hmm. And then we said, hey, with the actual condoms, one of the dangerous things is when you open up the pouch, which way is the condom? If it's, if you've got one condom in it, you're hot and heavy and you put it on the wrong way. Mm -hmm. If they turn it around, it's now it's contaminated. And the person who's going to suffer is the receiver. Mm -hmm. So with our condoms, they're in these buttercup tins. And it's easy open. So if you have nails or whatever, you easy yeah. open. And the tip is always sticking up. So you can pinch the reservoir. And it yeah. goes straight on. There's no guessing. And the, it's tapped close to the source of the rubber trees in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. And I know, I know you guys can't smell it. But I can. <laughs> it doesn't have like virtual. Yes. <laughs> it doesn't have that like chemical smell of condoms. Like right now we could all close our eyes and be like, I could smell a condom. You guys could smell it. Um, this is the lubricant is like body safe. Like I don't mind putting on my lips as lip gloss. Yep. It's so body safe. So everything that goes into our body is something that we're very mindful of. And a lot of women get bacterial vaginosis or UTIs um, from condoms. So it's hard to have that conversation of how long have you had that condom? What brand is it? Is it expired? It, like, is it a, one from the gas station? I don't know if they still have those anymore, but still. Yeah. <laughs> so that's I mean, our, that's it, our condoms. You know, it's empowering to know that you've got your own, you know, and you know, oh, yeah. you, come, you know, it looks pretty <laughs> like it's there for your safety. And your yeah, <laughs> you're so right. And, and what happens in the situation if, Unfortunately, a guy doesn't want to wear a condom. There's some guys that don't. And they say, oh, I don't have one. It removes that really awkward situation. Oh, I really wanted to, but now I can't. Yeah. And then they go, wait, oh, I actually had one. Now you're like, you're, I don't want to anymore now because you lied to me. But if you go, oh, you don't have one, but I do. Yeah, and it's, it's normalizing that as well. You know, having women carry condoms, carry their own. Yeah. Just Condoms is even better. <laughs> Breaking the stigma. Yeah. Um, and then so, we, we oops, then I also found this. Ah, what is so it? So this is our lubricant. So oh we, yeah, it's hallelujah. Say we have to pronounce it hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Um, Love so it. we wanted to break the stigma of I need lubricant because I'm dry. We can be dry at any age. We can be dry any time of the month. And it's not because I'm dry. It's I want it. It yeah. enhances pleasure. Mm -hmm. It feels good. And this is a, a moisturizing lubricant. So a lot of lubricants have, uh, it, it takes moisture out of your tissues. Mm -hmm. This actually has a kiwi vine extract. So you only need like a couple drops. And it's just to moisturize your tissues. So some women use it for tampon insertion. Some women use it just be, to feel good when they're out in the world, and some use it for sexual intercourse and intimacy. So I feel like I'm doing a whole infomercial. No, I, my legs, I'm just absorbing, like, wow, there's so many uses for it, though, you know? Like, I, when you think of lubricant, and especially the lubricant that you've created, it's great to know that there are so many things that you can use it for. But yeah. I don't even know, so... 
I feel I've learned a lot from this session with you. <laughs> oh, I love, I forgot we were even on Instagram live. I love yeah. chatting with you in general. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I know we need to wrap up because it's getting close to um, the hour. But what, so yeah, where can we find out more about Water Slide? Yeah. Um, um, Loveability Inc dot com is our website and you can sign up for our newsletter if you want to hear all the juicy stuff um our instagram we constantly post and we do giveaways and um i don't know if anybody before commented on what their guess what the water slide was i really didn't give them much time but i'm happy i'm going to send you a code so you can give to your peeps oh yeah um, for a discount and yeah. i'm happy to give away if you want to do a contest or whatever you want i'm happy to give away um, some fun. condoms and a water slide so can we just see the water slide once more for the, for the final shot? Sure. <laughs> so the box of the water slide. Dun, dun, dun. Here's the water slide. And by the way, it's only $35. Again, sounding like an infomercial, but I, I didn't like that a lot of sex toys were very expensive to answer your question from the beginning. And here's the water slide made from high sterling plastic body safe. This is as safe as plastic that surgeons use. So... I went um, with the most expensive, high quality plastic, and I didn't want to do another material, but we take these back to recycle them and they're 100% recyclable. So eco-friendly, body safe. It's making me really want to have a bath. <laughs> so, like, I think I'm going to go take a bath too. Yeah, me too. I mean, I've just learned out some new um, bath tricks from this combo. <laughs> Definitely be testing those out. Um, I, like, I think I'm going to make a shirt that's like, I'm a bath tricks yes I, I will wear one of those yeah I love it and, oh well, thank you again for having me on I loved it yeah no, and, it was amazing. and definitely finding out more about what you do and the whole intimacy coaching as well was like yeah so so thanks. such a busy lady and so yeah. so yeah thank you so much for your time thank you I'll talk soon bye everyone bye-bye <laughs>